All right, Coach. Uh, first off, just talk a little bit about um, what it's been like um, in your "quote unquote" off season. I know there's really no off season now when you take a look at uh, conditioning and also the recruiting process. But talk a little bit about uh, what it's been like since that final snap in the regular season. Well, uh, we won the final snap, which really helped us. That was a great win for us up at Western Michigan on the road, and we kind of build on that in the off season. We had a very good spring practice. We have our whole team back, basically, and we got Coyle Lewis from Snyder back. Uh, the NCAA granted him an extra year, which really, really helped us. Uh, we went into our camps. We had a record number of kids at camps, which with the economy and us not having a great season, we were very worried about, for example, our camp at Snyder. We had over 300 campers, and we've never had that many before. And now the kids are got a couple more weeks of the summer, and we'll give them a break. But then we report August 5th, and we open September 2nd. And, my God, we played a terrible opening game a year ago. And uh, we, we've got – everybody will be there. We've got to put our best foot forward to southeast Missouri. Yeah, if I looked at the numbers correctly, it's 17 to 18 starters that you guys will have coming back. Talk a little bit about how this team – you know, obviously it was a down year, but you could really surprise some people and really do well as far as uh, Mid-American Conference play goes. Well, you know, when you look back, people don't like excuses and analyzing, but we lost five games by a touchdown or less and won two MAC games and played without our quarterback basically six weeks. And uh, the offensive line, I think, gained most from that. They were all young guys. We're, we're still going to only have 12 seniors on this team. So uh, we're, this is our get back over the hump year and get back in the race. And we're, I think, going to be really, really good for the next two or three years. And that was our goal. Ball State's been have a good year, downtime. And we got to get consistent where you all are complaining about us going 7-5 and five or 8-4. and four. Talk a little bit about uh, what it meant to get Quail back. He got that extra year granted to him by the NCAA. Obviously, you know, he's had a few injury problems with his shoulder and different things throughout his career. But... Um, that has to be huge considering the guy's got over 3,400 yards career. Yeah, he's going to walk out of there the all-time everything. And not only is he a good player, um, uh, but he can play multiple positions. I have a loaded backfield right now uh, with Eric Williams and Corey Sykes and David Brown and him. I have the four best backs I think we've had since I've been there. So we've got to uh, move those guys around. Quail's short, but he's a great receiver too. So I, I think you're going to see us do some different things with him, take fewer hits. But what Quail is is calm and confident and smart and he's lost 15 pounds and he's really slimmed himself down and I think he's the fastest he's been since freshman year before he got hurt he's made a real effort this summer uh, to be in the best shape uh, of his career and I'm really proud of that you know, um, coming off that great season, obviously when you lost Nate Davis, but you lost, what people fail to realize is you lost so much of that good offensive line with Brewster and all those guys. Um, talk about how guys like Travis Arnold, a guy from Snyder, is gonna, are going to have to step up this year and really make um, the trenches a real strength for this Ball State football team, given that you have those guys in the backfield. Yeah, well, we have our first eight linemen all back, and eight of them all played last year, which was really great for us. And those guys, uh, they were just so much better this spring. We weren't even the same team in the spring. They're bigger, stronger, more confident, uh, playing faster. And that's going to be well, the strength of our team. And he's the only senior in the group. Uh, that's the best part. we got uh, those guys all back. Um, but, you know, you are what you are up front. And three of the five on the 08 team are in the NFL right now. So uh, there was a reason Nate had time to throw and Quail had room to run and all those things. But I think that will be the single biggest. It was this spring. And uh, we're a football team that will probably run the ball a lot more. Uh, people will say, where's that coach we used to have? Uh, and that will let Kelly and my other young quarterbacks ease in a little bit better and not put the pressure on them so much. Yeah, talk about where you are at at this point in your quarterback situation. Well, Paige will be our starter going in. Aaron Merchman was a kid who I elected to redshirt last year, not burn his year, who's a very, very good player for us. And uh, we have a highly touted freshman, Keith Wenning, from Coldwater, Ohio, who's as good a player as I've recruited since I've been there. So he will be in the mix, too. And we're, we'll go from really hurting at the position to a position of strength and youth. And who will play? The best player will play. We'll have a very competitive uh, fall camp. We won't have to yell for a quarterback to get in the huddle in fall camp. Final question, as a guy who uh, you know led the program at Kansas State, um, what's it like when you see all the talk about super conferences and you see the shift? How does that affect um, you at Ball State, or how does it make you view uh, what could be coming perhaps in the near future for major college football? Well, you know, everything's about change, and you, you've got to look at both ends of it, and I understand it's all about the dollar even in our league. Where it affects us is in scheduling. 
because these super conferences now don't need as many non-conference games. And uh, there, there's a trickle-down to everything, and a trickle-down will be for us in scheduling. For example, the Big Ten added 18. Well, this year we play Purdue and Iowa, and we have Indiana coming on the schedule and, and several others. So it's, it's you know, going to be a little bit different. But I think that's the biggest thing for us. And the, the good part is now that there are fewer games, they want to schedule teams from the MAC, And uh, if they want to schedule us, they got to pay us. So we, we like that too.